Hello everyone. In today's session, let us discuss about major abiotic factors. Before that, let us classify the biomes which are based on the annual precipitation and the range of temperature. In previous session, I already introduced about the biome. Biome is a large geographical area and according to the annual rainfall and the temperature, they are classified into six types. Number one, tundra. It is a frozen region towards the polar points. Then comes deserts where rainfall is negligible and temperature is maximum. Then comes grasslands where moderate rainfall will be there but here we don't find the wildlife. And then tropical forest, temperate forest and coniferous forest. So total six biomes you need to remember. So a large geographical area in which the living organisms are residing representing the biome. Now in the biome there are total five abiotic factors but as per our syllabus we have to discuss four. Let us begin with the sunlight. The light travels in the form of waves and the total light available for autotrophs to prepare food material this comprises the productivity in the ecosystem this we call it as photo period based on the photo period there are three groups in a plants day neutral plants which are not depending upon the photo period they complete their vegetative growth and reproductive growth but short day plants will reproduce when sunlight intensity is less that is special in winter while long day plants will show their reproductive growth when the intensity is maximum. The organisms especially the animals responding to light means they are active during daytime we call them as diurnals and those who are not responding to light they are called as nocturnal. In the aquatic ecosystem the organisms which move towards the light known as positively phototactic and which will move away from the light we call them as negatively phototactic. There are three groups of plants based on the response given to the light. Skeophytes, the plants which loves shade means they are always growing in shady places while heliophytes they will grow when the intensity is more means they will not love shade they want full sunlight for continuation of the growth when you consider penetration of the light on the earth near equatorial zone maximum intensity is available more photo period is available so naturally here productivity is more and that's why number of autotrophs number of heterotrophs even decomposers means the recycling of the nutrients is proper and that's why the number of species residing in this area is maximum but as you go away from the equators the light intensity goes on reducing accordingly we will find species distribution and then towards polar region the organisms who can adapt to the low intensity of the light we can find them in those regions let us discuss second abiotic factor soil soil related factors we call adaphic factors now how the soil is formed it is by weathering process there are three types of weathering physical weathering when the rock is exposed to the change in the physical factors like less temperature more temperature the rock becomes soft and it undergo weathering process chemical weathering atmospheric pollutants when they fall on the rock it allow decomposition of the rock forming the soil and biological weathering lichen like organisms they cover the rock surfaces even the bryophytes growing near the rocky area even they are responsible for weathering of the rocks so the first layer which is formed 
from the parental rock we call it as subsoil it is usually covered by the top soil and this top soil is always covered with the biomass which is undergoing decomposition making that top soil fertile so that biomass showing anaerobic condition due to growth of the anaerobes is known as humus and freshly added biomass is undergoing detrification so it forms a dry layer detritus humus will form a biomass adding fertile components to the top soil and below top soil we can see the subsoil and below subsoil there is a parental rock the particles of the soil if they are very close to each other we call it as clay soil in clay soil aeration is less but water holding capacity is maximum then the loamy soil means aeration is very very less and water holding capacity is maximum and the sandy soil where aeration is maximum each particle is separate from each other and water holding capacity is very very less so depending upon the texture of the soil we can decide the water holding capacity accordingly we can see the distribution of the autotrophs which are growing in that particular area coming to the next abiotic factor that is temperature based on the intensity of the light temperature increases or decreases so naturally optimum temperature is near the equatorial plane uh, let me clear one thing that any organism exposed to optimum temperature can regulate proper catalytic functions means enzymatic activity is more decrease in temperature enzyme activity is inhibited or increase in temperature enzyme undergo denaturation so the range of temperature will act on the metabolic rate of an organism and accordingly organism survival and the growth and the reproduction depends now there are organisms who can tolerate wide range of temperature we call them as urethermal and the organisms who cannot tolerate they have narrow tolerance level we call them as stenothermal the fourth abiotic factor need to discuss is water the main source of water is rainfall 100% rainfall is there on the on the earth surface but only 20% rain water is percolating down under the influence of gravity forming gravitational water and out of say 20% gravitational water 10% is reaching ground water table and 10% is in the form of hollard it is the total quantity of water hold by the soil particles now in that 10 percent 5 percent water is hygroscopic in nature means every soil particle is a imbibent so it will attract the water molecules and hold it tightly 3 percent of water is chemically combined means whatever mineral salts are there they go on dissolving in this water and the water retains in between the soil particles freely moving water molecules forming capillary water it forms 2 percent remaining 80 percent of the water is flowing above the surface and it is meeting the uh, lentic or lotic ecosystems it forms runaway water based on the salinity 5% to 20% mineral salts are dissolved in that means the salinity is low and more than 20% mineral salts are dissolved salinity is maximum so depending upon the salinity we call freshwater bodies and marine water bodies in freshwater body survival of the organisms we found which will have narrow tolerance we call them as stenohaline in the ocean the organisms are living which will have wider tolerance to salinity we call them as urihaline so in this four major abiotic factors sunlight then comes soil then comes temperature and fourth is 
water these four need to discuss and its impact on the survival of the organisms one question will be definite from these major abiotic factors in the next session let us discuss how the biotic communities are responding to these major abiotic factors i'll stop here with providing knowledge about major abiotic factors thank you very much